Australia's Great Barrier Reef is the largest marine park in the world and home to a diverse range of ecosystems, all contributing to unique habitats that are home to various animal and plant species. Located off the coast of Queensland, it is also one of the largest coral reefs spanning over an area of approximately 344,000 square kilometres. During this documentary, we will look at the success of the marine park, the issues that still poses threats to the conservation of the reef, and how zoning could improve similar ecosystems such as the proposed Tan Mustafa Marine Park. Only 5% of the marine park was zoned as a no-take area in the late 1990s. This meant only a small portion of the reef could be found where recreational use and fishing didn't occur. Fortunately, this changed in 2003 when the new zoning plan to increase conservation of the diverse ecosystem was introduced. This new zoning plan was time consuming, taking over five years to complete, and expensive, costing approximately $12 billion. The reason for the extensive planning for the new zoning areas were the range of industries the scheme would affect, including commercial fishing and tourism businesses. Potential threats to the Great Barrier Reef include overfishing, recreational use and pollution from nutrient-rich water produced from farming runoff that contains fertilisers and other waste. These were all main factors in the decline of coral numbers before the introduction of zoning. Now, however, the reef is under threat due to a natural factor, the crown of thorn starfish. Known for its outbreaks of large numbers and its large appetite for corals, the crown of thorns can be responsible for the destruction of vast areas of reefs in just hours. Without the corals, the ecosystem is severely damaged with declines in fish and sharks. Through extensive reviews, it has been proven that the Great Barrier Reef's no-take zones have significantly benefited targeted fish species populations. Surveys of these no-take zones have also indicated that coral species are more abundant in areas where recreational use is restricted. Outbreaks of the crown of thorn starfish are also lower compared with areas of the reef that allow fishing. Although these zoned areas have improved the population sizes of species that stay within the area, unfortunately for larger species such as the black tip shark, recovery of the population size will be much slower than that of the reef fish. Inclusion of local communities in the design of the restricted areas is believed to have contributed to the success of the marine park. The zoning of the marine park ranges from less restricted recreational and commercial fishing zones to conservation and highly restricted areas of the preservation no-take zones. A large review of economics played a main role in the planning of the marine park, which can be responsible for tourism use in the Great Barrier Reef. It is through the tourism industry that the marine park hopes to educate of, of the importance of the reef and similar ecosystems such as the Tan Mustafa. Bordering the Sulu and South China Sea, the proposed Tan Mustafa Marine Park covers over 1 million hectares and is home to a range of corals and other sea life. Unfortunately, much like the Great Barrier Reef, before zoning the area is heavily overfished and polluted through uncontrolled coastal development. The plans for the marine park are very similar to the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park in that the Tan Mustafa is also set to use zoning as a way of conserving the area while working with local communities who rely on fishing as an income. Developers of the Tan Mustafa Marine Park hope for the same success as the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. The Great Barrier Reef, however, spans over a large area and the success of the park is heavily reliant on the cooperation of tourists and fishermen with regular patrols of the area. Unfortunately for species of fish targeted by commercial fishing, the zoning has been unsuccessful because poaching can be extremely hard to detect in such large areas. Even with the introduction of heavy fines to corporations who break the strict policies of the marine park no-take zones, it has not deterred all poaching in the Great Barrier Reef. Many commercial fishing companies argue that most of their profit is made within the Great Barrier Reef Reserve, which could lead to a review of the management strategies currently in place. Overall, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Reserve has been successful in benefiting reefs and marine life off the coast of Queensland. It has
has set a benchmark for similar marine parks such as the Tan Mustafa in the conservation and preservation of coral reefs and their inhabitants, while including local communities to ensure the success and protection of reef species. However, poaching continues to threaten to destroy the reef and without further compromise between the commercial fishing industry and the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, both sides will be unable to maintain their goals.